Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, do you want to set this up or should I? Uh, yeah. Okay. Okay. So, so we went to, from, from Arizona. Back from Arizona. Yes. I was just going to say we're back from Arizona this week. And I had a great time. Oh, gosh, just a great time. We saw the Sidewinder. The Up saw Sidewinder, saw Devil's uh, Lake Fire, uh, Lake, Devil Fire Lake. Devil Fire Lake, I think it was called. Uh, that rash of yours didn't clear up uh, quite. I <laughs> know, no, but I tell you what. Yeah, yeah, I tell you what, it was worth it. I could live there till I die. I tell you what, it was tell you what, heaven. You know, I was, you know, I was running a little hot and cold over there, but I'll tell you what. Tell you what. Uh, the brunches in Arizona are second to die for. Oh, gosh. I'll tell you what. Eggs Benedict. And that cantaloupe. Did you try the cantaloupe? I'll tell you what. I, I took one home. Gosh. Uh, they are so juicy and wet. Award winning, I would say. So Blue Ribbon uh, from us here at TV15 to the cantaloupe uh, producers in uh, Phoenix. I'm pretty sure they're uh, Mexican. It's a Mexican group of guys. It's because of the dry weather. And then you get a good rind. That's what I heard. Oh, but uh, all that aside, uh, orange and really plump. Or almost plump. Yeah. Well, so I bet people are wondering about our chats with Don Gunderson, the Mindstorm group, and the things we got going on here. Right, yep. They're probably, we have some good news. Yeah, some very exciting news. Very exciting news. Uh, uh, which we can uh, announce yeah. to you. Yeah. Uh, what's that doohickey you got uh, there, Wayne? Ah, uh, that, you didn't notice that. You saw that's that's mine. No, it's a real slick piece of tech, but what is it? I picked that up just in the airport. It's, uh... Well, it's a gift to myself, I guess. Well, happy. Uh, it's a Philips Pro Executive 696. Yeah, micro cassette recorder. So, yeah, duty free, I guess, huh? Yeah, duty free. And, uh, you know, Chuck, our uh, cable lay, laying guy and our s- curtains guy. Yeah, Chuck, sure. Well, him and I, we took uh, we took it out for a test drive. And, well, we were, he was taking his birdhouses and putting them up in there. Uh, so up in the nature, and then he's going to take pictures of his birdhouses well, out, out in the woods. Then, so what did uh, what did you do? What did you record? Uh, you know, Chuck was out taking a whiz or something, and uh, I was just I don't know uh, struck by the moment. It was it was like a what do they call it a divine inspiration, right? You got like a flash from the heavens. Yeah, it wasn't quite like that, but uh, I certainly felt something, and I saw a fawn and a de- and a doe. Oh, well, why did you get them on tape there, or what? What did you What did you tape? I I don't know. It was just kind of a uh, came shooting out. Can you, can you just uh, maybe we could play it right now? Yeah, I think I don't know if I can connect this. Do you have the equipment here, or? Yeah, I think just, oh, you, you want to hear this, really? Yeah, well, you know, you got this new piece of machine. Oh, Tron, Tron here is giving me the cable here. Okay, all right. Pop that in there. Let's Let's listen to it. Elderberry and Winchcrest, and the towns that skip like stones. Me and the Bronco, four-wheel drive, appears before me. A fawn, fresh like the dawn frost. For a minute, for a sparkling moment, we make, we meet eyes. Hers transfixed upon mine. Vagabond glances. And as the crest of the tree line's shadow descends with the rising morning light, the fawn disappears 
as if never there, into the womb of Mother Earth. No evidence but a few dwindling tracks. I'm here again today with that. Computer games today, and this is uh, it's really cool that to be here. Thanks for watching. And well, today we have just a really interesting guest, Blaine Strovich from VectorSoft, and uh, he is here to talk about one of uh, the new games for the Apple II GS. It's called King of King's Quest. Hi, Blaine. Thank you for coming on the show. Pleasure to be here. Well, Blaine, what I first uh, the first thing I want to get to here is um, how do you feel about this game and and well it's very exciting because pic pixel mapping allows us to uh get uh much more realistic visuals than normally you can get which is perfect for the story of of, of jesus uh, which we're going to tell here in this game uh, and there have been a number of religious games well based uh, christian games based around the life of jesus and in this one you're focusing on uh, the temptations of christ which i thought was really cool and the way that you guys pulled it off it was just really a, a kind of a swell job with the graphics and uh, just wondering um, how much did you guys think about portraying uh, uh, such an old story in the modern world of video or computer gaming? Well, now that you mention it, uh, it is an old story, older than time itself, uh, but it's also a new story. It's very modern. And so the message that we're trying to send to youngsters uh, these days is that it is more relevant than ever, if not more more important than uh, than previously understood. So we worked out a way to bring the untimely story of Jesus Christ and his temptations into the modern era with a computer game. Uh, that aside, um, let's just move on and let's hear how uh, the gameplay is. So uh, this tells the story of Jesus uh, moving uh, through various stages in the game where he is tempted by Satan. But this time you get the unique choice of choosing your own uh, Jesus adventure. So um, when uh, the devil does tempt you, you actually have the chance within the game to choose whether to accept that temptation or to, as Christ did, uh, to deny it and, and become uh, the Christ. Uh, tell us, uh, level one, that's in the Judean desert, and uh, it's a really interesting level, and it, it's striking. Yes, well, we throw um, players right in right into it from the start. Uh, you wake up uh, dazed and confused on on the ground, um, having just been baptized by John the Baptist, which uh, I think we all are familiar with the story. Uh, John baptizes Jesus. And just at that moment, uh, God realizes that now it's time to act. And so he sends Jesus into uh, the Judean desert. Yes, and that's and the first scene reminded me quite a bit of um, Gabriel Knight 3, Blood of the Sacred, Blood of the Damned. And um, as far as point-and-click adventures go, um, it, I think that it was very similar to that. Uh, that said, uh, as far as using uh, arrow keys to produce an experience, uh, your games are very similar to uh, King's Quest and some of the other Sierra games. So, well, now I, uh, I think would be a good time to check in with our live game commentator, uh, Georgios, who's playing the game now here in the studio. Uh, and Georgios, uh, okay. take it away. Okay. Here we are. We just watched the uh, very cool uh, opening title screen and cartoon showing uh, Jesus and God and uh, John, John the Baptist. And now here we are in the Judean desert. Cool. Now there's many objects here. There's a... Here's a little... There's a scorpion. And let's just be daring and we'll step on that with our sandal. And I squashed it. Idiot. Then now... There's a number of other objects here. There's a... How about let's go and we'll click on the rock over here. There's the rock. 
Jesus is walking over to the rock here. I think he's going to pick it up. Yeah, he picks it up and oh, oh there's a uh, some kind of oh, this is cool. There's some kind of vampire bat or creature. Very cool. Uh, that's when his first temptation occurs because that is the appearance of Satan. Rendered, I think, very realistically with this. Um, uh, we're using the 16-bit uh, graphics to represent uh, uh, the various characters in the game. So Satan actually looks uh, photo real. Uh, I would say nearly photorealistic um, when he appears first on the screen. Uh, so this originally came out on the 2GS, uh, which most of you know has a 16-bit microprocessor running at 2.8 megahertz and uh, faster than the 8-bit pr predecessor. And uh, for those of you on Windows uh, who have 4-bit color or even 16-bit color, uh, you can enjoy as many as 3,200 colors at once. And um, I, for one, have I have uh, 80 megahertz uh, Intel processor and 8 megabytes of RAM I've upgraded. And uh, the game runs quite smoothly on my computer. And I just wonder, uh, for those who uh, are not computer aficionados, will they be able to... Uh, Played this game, for example, on a number of floppy disks. Yes, well, um, I've been running it uh, on my home computer, and it takes about 16 floppy disks, which I believe that's pretty average. So um, it is a long game, and it, there is a lot of text, which I understand takes up quite a lot of um, hard drive space. Um, but it does come with a cloth map. Um, well, I guess my question here is, uh, if Jesus were alive today and playing this game, uh, what part of this do you think he would like the most? And what part of it do you think he would dislike the most? Well, I think it is a common misconception or mis mischaracterization of Jesus to think that he wouldn't uh, be tech technologically uh, savvy. I think he would be uh, more than anyone. So I think he would appreciate most about this game the uh, state-of-the-art graphics and uh, the sound and the soundtrack, which um, I think Jesus would really like the soundtrack. As for what he wouldn't like about this game, I feel like there isn't anything that he wouldn't like about it. Vectorsoft has hired one of the best names in the game to compose this uh, soundtrack for King of King's Quest, and uh, someone whose titles I own many copies of. I do believe that MIDI is the future of music, and that in the future we will all be listening to MIDI uh, on our Walkmans and then on our home stereos. And uh, just to prove that point to you, let's play one epic piece from uh, King of Kings Quest. Uh, this one uh, was that was composed by uh, a very celebrated Japanese computer game composer, Hir Hirohito Masatori, who's also known uh, as Squared, um, as in the, um, uh, the second power. So his, his name is often represented just as a, as a very small two. So this piece is called Hosanna in the Highest Level. And this time, a dole alights across the staircase of morning moss and stops cold in its tracks as it spies me suspiciously. Fear not, I think. I feel my lips move. I wish I could tell it. I mouth the words, 
I come not to harm you. Your life is not a threat to me, and mine not upon yours. And for a minute, the doe's ear twitches, and I feel understood. Oh, gosh. Wayne, you're a regular Don Frost over there or something. Boy, oh, boy. Oh, come on now. A little poetry in the park once again. Oh, gosh, that was real. No, that wasn't. You're joking, right? Oh, it was real good. I can't believe. That came right off of the top of your noggin, huh? You really think that's was sounded like Don Frost? Oh boy, you know maybe a Don Frost or maybe a maybe a Daryl Shelby. I don't know. Wow, I don't know what to say. I uh, will keep using that tape of yours there because that could be worth millions of dollars one day when you when you sell your poetry books. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now you're jerking my chains. All right. Still. Anyway, uh, what were we talking about just before the? Uh, uh oh. Oh gosh, the uh, yeah, the antennas. Uh, are oh wait, we have that uh, good news. Yeah, great news. Uh, antennas are back up as of today. Hey. Yeah, and cheers, three cheers, hurrah, hurrah, hurrah! Uh, we can turn back on the on-air sign in the TV studio, and that's I tell you what, a relief to see that thing turn on. <laughs> First time in a long time. I'll tell you, it'll be a uh, so, <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. I just so uh, beaming, beaming over here. Yeah. So, uh, basically, we will be, we're, uh, you can watch us, you can tune us in uh, right now if you want to on your TVs on TV15. Yeah, so we're back on. Uh, we'll be on TV. We'll be busy with uh, TV things. And uh, so you finally get this podcast equipment out of here, this junk, <laughs> get it out of here. Well, now, hold on a second, Wayne. I mean, we uh, do have another at least nine months to a year. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Yeah, our contract with our uh, with our uh, uh, service provider here is going to, you know, uh, we got to keep the podcast rolling some way. Uh, we got to keep this junk in here. Okay, all right. That's right. I forgot. So you and I, we get to go back to the cathode ray tubes, but something will be here. Somebody will be here for you. Probably. <laughs> TV15 is brought to you by the Mindstorm Group and all of its affiliates. Pretty please watch and vote on our videos at funnyordie.com slash TV15. Like us on Facebook. And write us an iTunes review. TV15 Public Access is finally back on the airwaves. But keep tuned into the podcast for more thrills, chills, spills and f- Goodbye. And I squashed it. Idiot. Idiot. <laughs>